8. Sweepstakes The sweepstakes was built in Burlington, Ontario in 1867 and was a 119 foot long, or 36 meters, wooden schooner that experienced a rather short life on the water. While transporting coal on Lake Huron in 1885, it ran aground on some shoals near Cove Island and sustained hull damage. It was towed to Big Tub Harbor and was moored off the coastal village of Tobermory, which unexpectedly became its permanent home after the vessel's owners decided it wasn't worth the cost to repair it. They stripped the sweepstakes of valuables and simply left it there to sink with its cargo of coal still aboard. The coal was eventually removed, but the ship is still there, sitting just 20 feet, 6.1 meters under the water. It's popular among divers for its accessibility and visibility, due to the shallow and crystal clear water that has helped to earn its reputation as one of the world's most beautiful shipwrecks. It's also widely considered to be one of the best preserved 19th century Great Lakes schooners. While the sweepstakes is in remarkably good condition for its age, it's an old shipwreck and is inevitably deteriorating. Today, there are limits to how close divers can get to it without jeopardizing their safety. Park authorities reinforced the hull and deck with metal bars, and the sunken vessel is surrounded by a wire fence to prevent divers from disturbing it or hurting themselves. 7. SS Alchemos the 441-foot-long, or 134.6 meters, SS Alchemos was built in Baltimore, Maryland during World War II as part of the Emergency Shipbuilding Program, which provided the funding and resources to mass-produce cargo ships on an unprecedented scale. It was launched in 1943 and served in the war for roughly 18 months, carrying both troops and cargo in convoys that were often targeted by the Germans. In 1944, a crew member shot the Alchemos's radio operator, Maud Steen, and then turned the gun on himself. This was the first in a string of disturbing tragedies that happened aboard the ship throughout its career. On one occasion, workers accidentally trapped themselves inside one of the ship's compartments. By the time they were found the next day, they had all suffocated to death inside the small sealed space. Legend says that their spirits routinely haunted the ship in the years following the tragedy. In 1953, a Greek company called Pharos Shipping bought the Alchemos. Ten years later, it struck a reef near Beagle Island off the coast of Western Australia and spent months undergoing extensive repairs. Just hours after being towed out of Fremantle, the tow line broke and the ship ran aground. It wasn't possible to float the vessel at the time, so it was flooded with water to secure it in place and left in the charge of a caretaker who lived on board. Months later, in early 1964, another attempt was made to float the Alchemos. This time, it was successful and the ship was once again towed out of the harbor. However, things took another left turn during the voyage to Manila, when authorities seized the tugboat at sea. The crew was left with no other choice but to drop anchor and travel back to the Alchemos at a later time. In May of 1964, the ship lost its anchor and was blown into some rocks along the western Australian coast. This time, it was too damaged to be worth salvaging, and the vessel was abandoned. During the late 1960s, it was sold for scrap, but every time salvage workers attempted to retrieve the wreck, it caught on fire and drove them away. Lacking any other options, they left the Alchemos to deteriorate. For a long time, the imposing ship towered eerily over the shore, but today most of it sits beneath the water. While it's no longer the most noticeable thing in the area, it still attracts divers and paranormal enthusiasts who want to find out firsthand if the Alchemos is really haunted. 6. SS Maheno the 400-foot-long, or 122 meters, SS Maheno was built during the early 20th century and originally operated as a luxury ocean liner in the Tasman Sea, transporting passengers between New Zealand and Australia. It had first, second, and third-class accommodations and a carrying capacity of 420 passengers. Those on board had access to a dining room, smoking room, and a music room that housed a grand piano for live entertainment. Shortly after World War I broke out in 1914, 
The Mahino was converted into a hospital ship for servicing injured military members. It had eight wards, two operating theaters, five doctors, and a full staff of nurses and army medics. The 5,000-ton, 4,535,924-kilogram steel-hulled steamer transported wounded soldiers to and from various places throughout war-torn Europe, Egypt, and New Zealand. After the war ended in 1918, it was turned back into a passenger ship and returned to commercial service. In 1935, the Mahino was decommissioned and sold to a Japanese shipbreaking yard. Just a few days into its final voyage from Sydney to Osaka, the vessel's tow line broke during a cyclone. Crew members failed to reattach the line, and the ship began to drift. It washed ashore at Fraser Island, and the eight-man crew set up camp while they awaited rescue. Help finally came a few days later, and while the crew members survived, the Mahino was in rough shape. After several failed attempts to refloat it, the ship was left sitting along the shoreline. It was listed for sale, but nobody bought it. And what's left of the rusting hulk remains at the site to this day, where it's become an iconic part of the landscape. It'll eventually deteriorate and disappear, and visitors are banned from going onto the wreck for safety reasons. 5. MV Dayspring Situated along a natural harbor in the Scottish Highlands, the town of Corpoch is home to a decaying fishing boat called the MV Dayspring. The vessel is known to locals as the Old Boat of Cowl, or the Corpac Shipwreck, and it's been on the shoreline of the coastal village since 2011, when it wrecked during a bad storm. Built in 1975, the 85-foot-long, or 26 meters, Dayspring spent most of its career catching mackerel and herring. In 2001, the boat's owner, John Boyd, moored it at Kinloch Levin Pier. At the time, it was still operational, but Boyd apparently thought it was time to start a new chapter and wanted to turn the vessel into a floating seafood restaurant. For reasons that remain unknown to this day, the project fell through, and the Dayspring sat neglected for nearly a decade. A new owner bought the forlorn fishing boat in 2008 and began repairing it. However, a brutal storm ripped it from its mooring in 2011 and slammed it into the rocky shoreline, where it remains to this day. During low tide, the entire vessel is visible and accessible from all sides. It sits against the scenic backdrop of the surrounding mountains and has become somewhat of an attraction for photographers and explorers. Overlooking the lonely boat from more than 4,400 feet, or 1,341 meters, above sea level is the United Kingdom's tallest mountain, Ben Nevis. In a bizarre twist, the Dayspring's buoy somehow triggered its distress beacon one day in 2017. Not realizing that the signal was coming from the grounded boat, locals launched a search and rescue effort. They eventually figured out that the Dayspring was just trying to make sure they hadn't forgotten about it. Even though the wreck receives plenty of visitors, Corpoc is easily accessible by train or car, but reaching the boat requires a 15-minute walk from the nearest parking lot or train station. Do you believe the SS Alchemos could really be haunted? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. 4. Ameo Built in England during the mid-19th century, the Ameo was an iron steamship that carried passengers and cargo between various parts of Australia and New Zealand. It also played a vital role in laying the underwater telegraph cable that connected Britain and Australia via Singapore. The Ameo saw its fair share of collisions throughout its nearly 50-year career. In October of 1881, it crashed into the Swan Spit Lighthouse in Port Phillip Bay, off the Melbourne coast. Fourteen years later, in 1895, the ship ran ashore at Hamlin Bay in Western Australia. Its final wreck came in 1905, when it was blown ashore and crashed at Coogee Beach near Fremantle. Sand accumulated around the wreck, and it wasn't worth the cost to try and salvage it, so the ship was simply left there. For a long time, it was accessible to the public and became a popular fishing spot and was the perfect location for a family picnic. However, industrial projects in the area reshaped the coastline, and the Ameo became partially submerged. It's still a popular tourist attraction, but it's now a diving destination rather than a place to have lunch or cast a line. 
The historic vessel sits on pristine white sands in no more than 13 feet, 4 meters of water, and parts of it protrude from the surface. With its shallow depth and extremely clear visibility, it's known for both its beauty and for being easy to visit. While this is mostly a good thing, there have been some problems in recent years due to the wreck's skyrocketing popularity. The surge in visitors has led to more wear and tear on the wreck, and local authorities have tried, unsuccessfully, to get people to stop touching the rusting and fragile Ameo. Not everyone fails to comply out of deliberate disrespect. While some people blatantly ignore the rules to take dangerous selfies and don't seem to care if they compromise the ship's structural integrity, a lot of swimmers lean on the aging vessel to rest during a tiring swim. Many people simply seem unaware of the damage that they can cause by doing something that most likely feels harmless. Either way, local officials will have to impose stricter rules if they want to protect the Ameo from further damage. 3. YOGN42 There's a 6-mile or 9.7-kilometer stretch of coastline along the northern shore of Hawaii's Lanai Island that seems to invite maritime disasters. Nicknamed Shipwreck Beach, it's home to at least a dozen grounded vessels. While at least a handful of the decaying ships were deliberately stranded there, the conditions are notoriously unforgiving, with strong winds and large channel swells that make navigating a ship both difficult and dangerous. One of the most famous wrecks along Shipwreck Beach is the YOGN-42, a fuel tanker that entered service with the U.S. Navy during the Second World War. Due to a wartime steel shortage, it was made from a combination of concrete and steel called ferro-concrete. During the war, YOGN-42 served in the Pacific Theater, where it supplied American forces with gasoline. The ship's career was incredibly short-lived, and after just six years of service, it was decommissioned and struck from the Naval Register. In 1950, the vessel was deliberately grounded in shallow waters at Shipwreck Beach. It's one of the most visible wrecks along the infamous shoreline, where it's slowly succumbing to the effects of time and nature. The Navy has campaigned for YOGN-42 to be added to the National Register of Historic Places, which would provide the resources and funding to protect and preserve it as a cultural landmark. 2. USS Kittawake the American submarine rescue ship, the USS Kittawake, began her career in 1945, toward the very end of World War II. For nearly a half century, the 251-foot-long, 77-meter vessel participated in submarine trials and training exercises, carried out rescue and salvage missions, guarded and escorted submarines, and provided help to vessels in need. In addition to serving the military, the Kittawake came to the aid of civilians. In 1963, she picked up 12 Cuban refugees who were found in a small boat off Key West and transported them to safety within the United States. Following the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster in 1986, the ship's crew retrieved the missing black box at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean during a massive Department of Defense and Coast Guard search. After being in service for 49 years, the Kittawake was decommissioned in 1994. After languishing in Norfolk, Virginia for nearly 17 years, the aging ship was scuttled in shallow waters off Seven Mile Beach in the Cayman Islands. Since then, it's become a thriving artificial reef and is one of the Caribbean's most famous shipwrecks. 1. HMS Vixen Built during the 1860s, the armored gunboat HMS Vixen was the first British Royal Navy ship to have twin propellers. However, it was notoriously slow, topping out at just over 10 miles per hour or 16.5 kilometers per hour. It also handled poorly in rough seas, as its crew learned during a winter gale in the Irish Channel in 1876. In the late 1860s, the Vixen was towed to Bermuda to serve as a defense ship. Just a handful of years later, in 1895, the Royal Navy sold the ironclad vessel to a scrap merchant. Its machinery and engines were removed the following year, and the ship was scuttled in a narrow channel off Daniel's Head to prevent torpedo attacks. Since then, the government of Bermuda has designated the Vixen as a protected wreck, 
Its bow can still be seen protruding from the shallow turquoise waters, where the vessel still sits to this day. Snorkeling is allowed at the site, but a permit is required to dive, and visitors can also see the ship by taking a glass-bottomed boat tour. Which of these beautiful shipwrecks would you most like to visit? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.